Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial video for 1.16. In this episode, we're going to be covering natural mob spawning and I will be covering mob spawn eggs in the next episode. I'm splitting them up because they are two separate topics, but just know that we'll be covering that next time. But in today's video, we're just going to be doing natural mob spawning. And if you remember from the last episode, if we go to our init package and go to mod entity type, we did create a hog entity in the last video and it is a creature. And so what, what I wanna do in this video is uh, make this creature, this entity spawn in the overworld. And so to do that, we wanna come over to our world package here and we want to create a new class inside of our gen package. So right next to our mod origin class, we wanna right click new Java class and we're gonna name this mod entity spawns. All right, so add to repository, and this class is going to uh, do something very similar to what mod origin does. So we do need to register it with the mod um, event bus subscriber. So we want the at mod tag above, and make sure you import mod, import class, and then dot event bus subscriber. And then we need to pass in our mod ID is equal to our main class, so tutorial, tutorial dot, and I think I need to import my class first tutorial dot mod ID there we go import class uh, from our our specific mod here so tutorial dot mod ID that's your main class there and then we need to also set our bus equal to mod dot event bus subscriber dot bus and then very important it has to be dot mod so there we go uh, now that we have that set up what we want to do is create a at subscribe event at subscribe event uh, because this is going to be a uh, an event, and we want to call this uh, this method just public static void uh, spawn entity, or you could also do like spawn mobs, whatever you want to name it. Really, spawn entities, entity plural entities. There we go, and we want to pass in a FML uh, load complete events, and we can just name this E or event if we want. There we go. All right, so again, just like with mod origin, this uh, event is going to run after uh, forge loads, it completes this load event. So uh, basically, uh, it's just gonna run through all of the, the biomes uh, in, in the game, and we can decide if we wanna add to that biome spawn list or not. So pretty simple. Uh, I'm gonna show you a few if statements here so you can see how to spawn things in the nether in the end, but just know you don't need these if statements if you're not gonna spawn in the, in the nether or the, the end. If you're just gonna spawn in the overworld, you can just skip all these if statements, uh, but hopefully you know Java, obviously, and you'll be able to figure that out on your own uh, because you really shouldn't even be using Forge if you don't know Java. So. Uh, if you want to spawn things in the nether, you can, oh, well, actually, I forgot to mention, very important, we have to loop through the biomes, of course. So uh, we want a for loop that just grabs a biome from, uh, I believe it's forge registries dot biomes. Yeah, so an import biome there. So this is for loop is going to loop through all the biomes in the game. And, uh, oh, let me bring this up. So if we want to spawn our mobs in the nether, uh, this will be nether mobs then we're gonna have to check for uh if the biome is in the nether so if biome dot get category is equal to biome or not biome it's i think it's just category right yeah category dots uh and then you can choose a category uh, in this case it would be nether so what this is saying is if the biome is inside of the nether then we can run this code and then you can throw your mob in there i'm not going to be uh using this because um, I'm not spawning in the nether. I want my hog to spawn in the overworld, but just know that you could do that. And uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, now we can do the same thing. Actually, we can copy and paste this line uh, for the end, but instead of uh, checking if it's equal to the nether biome, uh, the nether category rather, we can just check if it's equal to the end. And again, same thing. If you wanted to spawn your mobs uh, in the end, you could throw the code that I'm about to show you inside of here instead and do whatever you'd like. Um, I'm going to keep these up uh, just for tutorial purposes so you can see them, but obviously you wouldn't want to check for this if you're just going to like leave them empty. That would be pointless. Uh, but yeah, so just know that's how you do it. Uh, and if you want to spawn in the overworld, um, overworld, well, I guess um, in this case, I'm going to add some else's because we're assuming that uh, if this is going to run, then it obviously isn't another one. Uh, so yeah, okay, so then we can just do an else statement. Uh, again, you don't need this stuff if you're just doing overworld. You can just check for the overworld biomes. 
Um, so now that we know that we're inside the overworld here in this L statement, we can uh, do a few things. So we could just spawn our, our mob, you know, however we want, but I want to make sure that our mob does not spawn in the ocean, obviously, because we don't want our like hog entity just like running around in the ocean. So I'm going to first make sure that the biome, uh, I'm going to get the category. I want to make sure that it is not equal to, uh, very important biome.category.ocean. So there we go. So we're making sure that the biome that we're accessing is not an ocean because otherwise you will have your mob spawn in the ocean. Uh, so now that we know that it is a land biome on the overworld, we can uh, add our, our mob by doing biome.getSpawns and then we can pass in the entity classification. So uh, if we go to mod entity type here, you can see that we classified our hog as a creature and uh, there's a lot of different ones. We have like, um, like I showed you uh, earlier, there's monster, there's water creature, uh, I set minus creature, and that's probably what most of yours are gonna be. So uh, whatever you, your, whatever you put here, essentially this this mod entity classification, we can just copy it. You just want to paste it in here, uh, and all of your creatures are gonna go here. Uh, if you were, for example, trying to set the natural spawn for a uh, mob, uh, like a hostile mob, you would put uh, monster here instead, and it would follow like monster spawn behaviors. So yeah, uh, I'm doing creature though. Um, and we want to um, dot add a new spawnless entry. So we can dot add, let's bring this down here because it is going to be kind of long, uh, a new biome dot spawn list entry. And inside of here, you're going to pass in uh, your entity. So mod entity type dot get your entity, in my case hog, and then we need to do dot get of course. Um, and then we need to pass in three uh, unique parameters. So uh, this is going to determine how your your mob like spawns. So we know that it's spawning in um, a biome that's not an ocean, but uh, the weight, which is this next number here, is going to determine how like rare your uh, your entity is. So the higher the number of the weight, the more likely it is to spawn. I believe could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. And I have a link in the description here to a MC Creator uh, wiki. And again, I know we're not using MC Creator but these uh, pages are really helpful and it just talks about how spawning works in Minecraft. And you can come down here and see the default uh, weights for vanilla entities. And you can see cows have a weight of eight, uh, sheep has a weight of 12, pigs have a weight of 10, and you can sort of go off of that. So uh, I want my hog to be similar to a pig. So I'm gonna copy the same um, weight that pigs have, which is 10 here. And that's gonna make it you know, somewhat likely to spawn, but not super likely. Uh, so we can put 10 there and then um, the next one is going to be the minimum group count. So this is the minimum size of groups that it'll spawn in. If you set this to like three, for example, uh, your mob will always spawn in a minimum group size of three. So with three other mobs. Uh, so we'll get basically like groups of three hogs. If you were to set this to one, then the minimum that will ever spawn is just one. So I'm going to set this to three. So we always have a group of three spawning and then the max I'm going to set to five. So again, this is the minimum group size, this is the maximum group size. If you just wanted your mob to only spawn as one mob every time, you could just set the minimum to one and the maximum to one. And that would accomplish that pretty much. So yeah, you can customize these however you'd like. And yeah, we're actually completely done, which is really awesome, super easy as you can see. Uh, and every time you want to add a new um, mob to the like natural spawning here, uh, all you have to do is just get the biome, get the spawns, throw in the entity classification, entity classification. Maybe you're doing like a, a monster this time. Um, and then you just need to do dot add and then pass in a new one of these listing, these list entries that has your entity, uh, the weights and all that stuff. So super easy to just continually add over time. And yeah, so now we can actually file, save all. Uh, I'm gonna run the client here and I will see you in the game to test this out. All right, so I just loaded up a fresh new world and we're gonna go look for some of our custom entities spawning naturally in the world. All right, so here we go. We found a group of our custom spawning entity that did take a while, so you might want to change the uh, the weight if you're having trouble finding your mob, but we can see that they are spawning naturally uh, right by this village, and it seems like it's a group of one, two, three, 
uh, four. So uh, just like we set between a uh, group size of three and four. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for naturally spawning entities. Oh, there we go. There's another group right over here. So yeah, you can see it's working. Uh, so that's gonna do it. Thanks guys so much for watching. In the next episode, like I said, we will be talking about how to make custom spawn eggs. So definitely stay tuned for that and I will see you in the next episode.